And welcome back to my channel, Black Tape Mechanic, and to another episode of Free on Facebook, a series of videos in which I repair, reuse, or recycle items I find for free on Facebook Marketplace, with the hope that they won't go into the landfill. In this episode, I got this beautiful GE washer that won't start at all. So I'm going to be showing you how to repair this washer, and in this case, replace the lid lock. So if you like this video, Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more DIY and tinkering videos. You got a GE washing machine similar to the one I have here and it just won't start the washing machine, washing cycle. It's most likely an issue with the lid lock. De to demonstrate this, I got this machine. It's hooked up to the water here and it's got the drain hook up here. It's got some clothes, clothes in there and we're just going to attempt to start a cycle and as you'll see it's not going to start at all or it's not going to even fill the, with water or anything like that so I'm just going to so if you got an issue and you got you see the four out of the five lights are lit up then after maybe 15 to 20 seconds these this machine will just time out and all these lights will turn back off and uh, no matter what you do you can hit the start button again and uh, it'll just time out then uh, turn back off so if you're having that issue with this particular machine or a machine in style similar to this one um, then uh, most likely it's an issue with the lid lock as you can see it just turned off again and that continues to happen no matter how much times we press the start button here it used to be on older machines the uh, an issue with the lid lock would only affect the spin cycle or the agitation cycle but uh, now for these newer ones it just won't even allow you to start the run at all so yeah I'll show you how to do this repair and it's relatively easy six screws so one two three four five and six they hold back this back cover right here So once you got them removed, you go ahead and pull off this panel right here. And it's okay if it dangles a little bit because this is just a diagnostic port for um, if the technician had to come out and look up air codes on this and this is just a ground. So it's okay if it just dangles, hangs a little bit like that. All right, so after you removed those six screws, we're gonna remove these two right here on the bottom so these two as well to get to that screw you may have to move around this motor capacitor a little bit and that's okay Alright, so with all those screws removed, we're going to go ahead and pull this towards ourselves and then lift it up so we can take this entire top off. So. Alright, you may have to jostle it around a little bit. And here it is. So as you saw, I didn't have to jostle this thing around to get the top to come off, but the best way I have now to do it is uh, to actually lift up the backside and push it forward and that, that will be a little bit easier. But uh, once you get the screws off, you'll get it off. And now we have access to the lid lock, which is right here, and the lid lock connector. So we'll be taking that off next. So there it is, underneath the... The top assembly right here so let's just go ahead and lift up on the top right here and undo that electrical connector for the lid lock just like so now set it back down and take the lid lock off itself all right to take out the lid lock we're going to take your putty knife and just slowly work our way around this um, piece right here
There we go. So that's how you get it off. All right, then to get out the lid lock, you got to push down on the black tab right here and kind of pull it towards the left, and then it'll pop right out. And it'll just 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 undo it from the hinge right here. And there it goes. So yeah, I'll, I'll post the link. Uh, on Amazon where you can find these ones or if you don't trust the, the Amazon ones you can get the OEM ones from the GE website all right so to put on the new one you just lift up the lid right here and the, this piece right here you're gonna install first just like so just like that just try to show it better and then just once that's in, then you just shift it to the right until it clicks in just like how it was before. So now it's nice and clicked in. That black tab should come in through that hole right there. That's how that thing is installed. And then you just put this plate back on there. And it really only goes in one way. So right here, it's got three prongs, one, two, and three, and the small prong Right here can't fit in over here because that's where the black tab is for the lid lock so you just put it in this way and snap it into place and that's it that's so after you got that snapped into place there we're just gonna go back and lift um, the lid and put rehook the electrical connector for the lid lock and uh, reassemble everything There we go, clicked into place. All right, so we've got the new lid lock in there. Let's go back and now just put everything back on in reverse order. And these little metal clips, there's got some metal clips in the front that'll just clip into place when you put some pressure on here. Like so. Yeah, so before I put this back panel back on, I'm going to show you how to test to see if your lid lock is good or bad um, with a multimeter so you can double check before you buy this piece. And to do that, um, you just need to unplug it from the board. Obviously, this machine's unplugged from the outlet right now, but the switch to the lid lock on the board is just this one right here. It's actually labeled. If I can show you. I don't know if you can see that, but it actually says lid lock um, right there. There we go, lid lock. So it's the red, white, I mean, sorry, the red, yellow, and purple wires going into that connector. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and undo that connector there, just like so. And we're gonna test for resistance between the red and the yellow wire. So basically, when the lid is closed on a good lid lock, we should have some resistance between those two wires. And when it's open, it should be read that it's an open circuit. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my multimeter over here to uh, resistance. And I got, I got it just right here in resistance and I'm gonna stick the probes one on the red or inside the red one and one oops on the yellow and we're getting about 90 ohms of resistance with the lid closed right there so I'm going to attempt to do this with one hand so we should keeps coming out of the connector here but let me see if I can just jam it in there so I can demonstrate opening up the lid and see what that looks like all right so I got 90 ohms right here and I'm gonna open up this lid and it should go to open circuit 
Now I've got the lid open and there it goes. So you can see the lid back here where my hand is, it's open. And we're reading the open circuit and when we close it, we should get some sort of resistance reading back to 90, around 90. So if you, if the lid lock itself is bad, and you should be getting an open circuit regardless of whether it's closed or open. All right, so once again, I got this machine in my test station here. I got it filled up with some clothes and hooked up to the water lines. We're gonna give this thing a go. Last time, when the lid lock was broken over here, it wouldn't start anything. So we're just gonna set it to some arbitrary settings over here. Now let's just set it to this. And uh, already, you see, I've already heard this, the valves opening up and uh, some water going into the machine here. And uh, you can hear the water going in, whereas before there was nothing happening. So uh, I'll just cut the video right from right here and I'll come back when the, if the machine actually progresses to the next step. But uh, I'm pretty certain that this fixes the issue of a GE washing machine not starting. Alright, we're back to check up on the washer and it looks like it's advanced to the spin cycle here. If you can hear it. Yep, anyways, it looks like it's working just fine. And uh, yeah, if you look over here, it's in spin, but you can also see that the lid lock light is lit up as well. So that's one indication that uh, it's working fine now. And uh, if your lid lock is bad, that light most likely won't be lit up either. So yeah, if this video helps save you some money, consider subscribing to my channel for more DIY and tinkering videos and to help me get to that 5,000 subscriber mark.